Hey, thanks everyone for being here. Obviously, this is a uh, very exciting time for us with the draft uh, in two days, um, kind of right around the corner for agency to follow that. Uh, we had exciting uh, press conference a few weeks back with Coach, Coach Bud, and uh, it's been an unbelievable uh, experience just spending time with him and his staff and, and working with our players and prepping for the draft and just the way that they've kind of uh, partnered with us. So I'm um, excited for the draft, the upcoming offseason, and the season following that. And with that, just kind of take any questions. How different has this process been this year, having been, you know, in the GM seat for the whole pre-draft process and having your whole front office kind of put together and, you know, interjecting a head coach into it? Way different. So, as you kind of mentioned, you know, last year at this time, I thought, you know, we were, I was obviously part of the process, so I thought, thought we were in a really great spot, but we did do some things with staffing and, and just our processes now, our staff being uh, completely intact. Uh, really integrating uh, Coach Bud into, into everything and him being here in time to really be part of that as we prepare for, for these uh, key moments. It's been great, and I think because of that, we'll make a great selection in the draft or selections, depending on how things shake out. Um, and I think we'll hopefully do some great things in free agency as well. You mentioned Bud. How, does, how has he played into this kind of process, and how has, in, has his input helped out? Uh, it's definitely helped out. Um, I'm, I'm very thankful for his willingness to kind of immerse himself in, in the process. It's not a fun process at some times. There's a lot of time, a lot of video, a lot of sitting around talking. Um, but he's completely been into it. He's, his staff has been really a big part of it. You know, they, these guys are really on board, and, and the uh, partnership and the collaboration has really been a lot of fun and, and enjoyable. Jack, can you give us a big picture view of the draft strengths, where it's deepest maybe, the areas? Yeah, I'd say a big picture of the draft for me, and, and you kind of look at the mocks, and I think they have like some level of a representation of what the draft is. I think at the top of the draft, uh, there's some young bigs that have a chance to really impact our league uh, now and going forward for a lot of years, and, and maybe even change the way the league has, has gone to some extent. There's some really good back-to-the-basket bigs that are going to end up playing. Um, I think you kind of move on from that. There's a little bit mix of guards and wings, and we'll kind of see how that shapes out. And then when you get into our range, I, I think it feels a lot more like guards and wings in our range, that uh, guys that have a chance to impact and play maybe as early as rookies, it's a hard thing to do, particularly in the 15 to 20 range or, or after. But I think uh, as you kind of get in our range, there's some guys that are ready to play and have an immediate impact and, and also still continue to develop because they have high character and high work ethics. So, um, and then in the second round, I think this is a deep draft. I think there'll be a handful of players that are taking the second round that end up having good NBA careers. Are you able to share with us any of the players that you did bring through the process? No, you know, I'd say, you know, for us, um, we, we decided to keep our workouts uh, private this year, and it was important for us. Um, just, just some teams do that, some teams don't. That's, it's proprietary information to us, and information I think gives us a competitive advantage over the rest of the league. And so um, I'm not going to share who we brought in, but I, do, I will tell you that we have the 17th pick right now. I feel very confident that we brought in the right players. Um, throughout the workout process to feel even strong, more strong about them throughout that, as well as cover our basis on the rest of the draft, if we, whether we trade up or trade down or trade out for that matter. But we brought in a number of players, and I feel confident that we brought in the right players. You've done your homework, but how hard is that 17th pick? I mean, just because it's not top 10, you know, and how do you, you know, judge that or gauge that going into this? Yeah, it's hard. The draft is really hard in general. I think it gets harder the further you get from the top pick, and that's that's what makes it fun and exciting and challenging. But Again, I would just say our staff, the amount of coverage that we had throughout the year, and not really just this year, but throughout their times as scouts on all of these players, the amount of reports we have, the amount of times that we saw them play, uh, the medical information that we have, the, the workout process, the combine process, agent interview, all the different things that we've done, um, you do the best you can to make a great selection. And at the end of the day, okay, I'll call a name, and we hope it works out. What qualities or skill set would be ideal for you at 17? What do you, you know, what's most important? Uh, most important to me, I think like a home run pick for us would be a player that can impact our team this year as a rookie. And that's a hard thing to find at 17. But if we could find someone that can do that, that also has ability to get better throughout their rookie career and play on their rookie uh, rookie contract, I'm sorry, play on their rookie contract, and then hopefully have a, a long career with the Bucks, like that would be a home run. Uh, what skills? I mean, shooting will help us. Defensive toughness and rebounding would help us. Um, guys that have positional size will help us. So different things like that are, are different attributes. But at the end of the day, we want a player that can come in and impact our roster. It's, it's a valuable roster spot for us. I think we always talk about how guys fit with Giannis and how you try to best maximize that. What have you learned in the last year about those type of players? Who are the guys that fit with him? Yeah, I think there's a lot of different things that fit with Giannis because Giannis has a great amount of skill set and different things that he brings. But uh, you got to be a great competitor. 
you have to be a great professional and be serious uh, to fit with Giannis. You need to be able to shoot the basketball, um, especially on the wings. Um, uh, and just guy, I think Temple, guys that play with Temple and pace are going to be important. I think Bud, with his system, and that's a big part of it. Beyond Giannis is also the system that Bud's going to play and understanding that and why it's been so valuable to have him here and talk through like the style they want to play. He's going to want to play a faster pace of basketball. He's going to want to play a, uh, a game where they share the ball, where they move the ball, shoot it a lot. You want to be able to pass handle and shoot at every position. So guys that are offensively skilled and then compete on the defensive end are going to be really important for us. How do you because you are that? a playoff team now, you mentioned looking for someone that can maybe help you right away. Is that a change in philosophy as far as where this franchise is compared to like a few years ago where you'd be more likely to take a project? I think so. Yeah, I think that's fair. Um, even maybe a change in philosophy from where I was last year to some extent. Um, and that's not to say that for the right talent and the right upside and the right swing that you try to hit the home run. Um, and there may be a handful of guys like that in our range. Um, I, I would say that we have some really good young guys that are developing and getting better and still have a lot of upside on our roster currently. I think DJ's one of those guys, Von Maker, Sterling Brown. Um, those guys have helped at different times, but also still have a lot of upside in, in our development guys. And so I think because of that, I feel more comfortable um, knowing that if we end up with a guy who's maybe not as high of upside, and, that, and, and just because they don't have a high upside doesn't mean they can't get better, but theoretically doesn't have as high upside, doesn't mean that we shouldn't take them, you know, because being able to help us right now is important. So bu building off that, where do you balance the, you know, the questions about taking the best available player versus taking the position you need? Does one take precedent over the other this year? I think those are all like filters at the end of the day. So I think you rank. You rank guys based on talent. You rank guys based on fit. You rank them on their character, all the different things that you have. Um, and at the end of the day, if there's a tie, then you decide what matters more. Does talent matter more? Does fit matter more? Um, does upside, all those things. But uh, I, I would say at, at its basis, it's really more just kind of a ranking on talent and, and deciding then if they fit and all the other things. Can you walk us through what the restricted free agency process will look like for Jabari Parker. I know there are certain things you can and can't do and kind of what the timeline is. Yeah, not specific to Jabari, but just restricted free agency in general. Um, to make a player a restricted free agent, you have to give them a qualifying offer, which is a, a contract that you would offer them uh, prior to July 1, free agency starting. Uh, they then are a restricted free agent, which gives us, the team, the right to uh, match any offer that a team uh, may give them, uh, while also negotiating a contract with them if, if, if you want. And then um, you'd either decide to match the contract or not match the contract. Obviously, if you match it, that's your player on that contract. And if you don't, uh, he goes with the other team. Uh, in the event that a player doesn't receive an offer or a contract, um, their, their last resort is to basically uh, um, sign that qualifying offer and could theoretically play on that contract as well. You mentioned wings and guards kind of being in your range there at 17. When you look at the final four teams, they have a lot of wings and guards and maybe not quite as many bigs. Does that feel like a good fit for you guys, that there is a, a lot of wings and guards to choose from in your range? Yeah, I think it does actually feel like a good fit. I, we're really happy with the group at 17. Um, our group, we feel strongly we're going to get a good player there. Uh, there's a lot of interest in the 17th pick, so you know we'll, we'll explore ideas of moving up, explore ideas of moving down potentially even moving out of the draft. Uh, but at the end of the day, if we sit for the 17th pick, uh, we feel really good about the group of guys that we're going to be able to draft from. You're talking about Jabari at the restricted free agency, how much does that looming decision impact how you guys handle the draft? Thinking that maybe you need to get someone to to fill in for that roster spot or for that production or knowing you know just the different options are available there? Yeah, I think um, even though you know I've, I've talked about how we want a guy who can come in and help, we are still drafting 17th in the draft, and it's still going to be a rookie player. And to expect a rookie player to really have a major, major contribution is not something that we probably should do. It doesn't mean that it can happen. It happened you know, with us, with Malcolm, two years ago. It, it happened this year with a few players that were in the draft. Um, but I, I think really it has not much impact at all on our free agent decisions um, or trade decisions relative to where we want to take this roster. Are you feeling a little more pressure knowing that you do have one year under your belt as the GM? There's the new Bucks arena. There's a lot of hype around this team. Not at all. Compared, you mean compared to last yeah. year? No. This like feel much more prepared. Um, we have again having the entire staff, having Bud here, and, and really preparing for us with this. Um, the amount of work that that my staff has done in the last year, uh, preparing for this moment on Thursday, the amount of work that I've done. Um, do I feel nerves? Of course. Do I feel pressure? Of course. Like there's that's what always with this job, but 
uh, compared to last year, not even close. Speaking of last year, obviously you kind of had a fly by the seat of your pants there in that last week to figure out exactly what that would be. Do you feel like you could learn something from that experience last year, even though maybe it was a little bit shorter of a time period? Oh yeah, no, I've learned I learned a ton from that experience in every day since. So um, for me to just to continue to learn as we go through this process, as I go through this process and evolve and develop, and again, I think we've done some really good things, and I think we've probably done some things that we'll want to do better um, relative to the draft or other things, of course. But I, I've learned a ton, and we'll continue to learn. The team's had such success with second round picks in the last few years. Is there anything to that that you guys are scouting that round better than other teams? Um. I don't know that we're scouting that round better than other teams. I think one of the things that we've done, um, and even prior to me being in this position, one of the things that we've done really well is understand guys' floors um, in the second round and understand, you know, I think when you try to find a draft pick in the second round, you want to understand what is it that they can do at the NBA level. And if they have a skill that they can hang their hat on, whether it's defense or shooting or rebounding or shot blocking, whatever that is, and you can say, like, I know they can do that at an NBA level, that's always given us a confidence in drafting a player like that, and I think we've done a really good job identifying that and then pulling the trigger and getting guys like that. You mentioned trying to get someone that can contribute next year. Does age play a part into that at all? Like a four-year guy that has gone through a lot, maybe he is a little bit more, or does that not play into it? I would say very little. I, mean, I think it's more just your physical stature, um, you know, the, the types of things that, you can, that can translate uh, immediately. Uh, positional size, I think, matters um, in, in being able to have instant impact. I would say age has some factor just because it probably plays into some of those things, but not directly. John, not draft related, but Sterling, <coughs> how has he handled everything that's occurred? Obviously, the lawsuit was filed today. I don't know how much interaction you have with him, but how has he handled everything these last few weeks, last couple of months? Yeah, a lot of interaction with Sterling and, and uh, beyond proud of Sterling um, for the way that not only he's handled you know, the, the situation, the circumstances that have kind of come out lately, but just the way he handled a rookie year in general as a player, um, um, how he earned and fought for minutes on the floor, and, and just relative to all that, like we're completely 100% behind Sterling. I think what happened to him was um, obviously not acceptable and shows us how far we have to go, but beyond proud of Sterling and the way that he's handled all this. Has that been tough on you guys too, as well, knowing it's a national story, all these videotapes, all these different angles keep coming out from that incident from that night? Yeah, I think it's not tough. We just we support Sterling completely, 100%, and every everything that he's he's kind of went through and the way he's handled it. And so, it's not been tough for us to, to support Sterling at all. Well, kind of switching topics again, but what went into uh, working with Coach Bud to getting his assistant coaching staff put together? Yeah, uh, good question. Um, with Coach Bud, it was really first of all evaluating our staff and the group of guys that were existing that were still here that were working, um, and, and the professionals that they were and the jobs they were doing. Evaluating that and the fit, um, and then transitioning from that and trying to identify who it is that he thought was best for him to to either bring here uh, from Atlanta if we could, or to find out in, in elsewhere. And um, once we identified that, then you know it was my job to figure out how to get them here from various teams or different situations and, and negotiate their contracts and have those guys be on the staff and get their families here. And there's a lot that goes into it. So it's not just saying, hey, we want these coaches. You've got to get their families here and get them here. And these guys are awesome. You, know, they've, you guys will kind of witness them at different times throughout the year working with players. They have an unbelievable level of excitement and energy. Uh, they're well respected for their player development. Our players, a lot of our players, maybe even all of our players, have worked one on one with these guys in the short time that they've been here already, whether it's in Milwaukee or out, out around the country. And these guys are really excited about Bud and his staff. I know we talked on the day of his introductory <coughs> press here about trying to figure out how you get in contact with all the players, how you get them that offseason program. How do you feel that went in that process and getting them ready for this summer? Yeah, it's been great, and we're obviously early in it. So I, I, even the fact that we're early in it right now and the progress we've made so far, I feel great about that. But um, we've got a great plan in place. The guys are totally bought in right now, and so far it's been it's been really good. At this point, do you feel like everybody's on the same page to where the 17th pick does come? You all yell out the same name at the same time. You guys pretty know who you want pretty much if he's still around. We'll definitely all yell at the same name at the same time. <laughs> Whether or not we're on the same page, I don't know. <laughs> Thank you, John. Yeah. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you.